It'll be 20 years to the day soon. The day the sky was ripped apart and countless bolts of light rained down upon us. I think this calls for a little history lesson. In 1994, a group of asteroids was discovered taking a long elliptical orbit around the sun. They were created when an unknown asteroid struck the 1986 VG1 Ulysses, an asteroid in orbit around Jupiter. The orbit of these Ulysses asteroids was on a collision course with Earth with an estimated 10,000 meteors set to strike the surface. Since there was no way to divert the orbit of each asteroid, construction began on a vast anti-air railgun network, a last-ditch effort to intercept and destroy the meteors. They built six facilities. The test unit Type 0 was built in China. Type 1 was built in America, and then four Type 5 units were built in Australia, Turkey, Namibia, and Argentina. In July 1999, the asteroids began to strike. Thanks to the railgun network, damage was kept to a bare minimum, only about enough to destroy the entire world order. Never in its existence had mankind experienced such a catastrophe. It came to be called the Ulysses disaster. The near total loss of infrastructure led to economic chaos, particularly in the hard-hit Eurasian continent. To avoid total breakdown, the nations of Asia and Southern Europe rearranged themselves into regional federations. Military budgets were slashed, and the Federation poured most of their money into rebuilding. The depletion of energy sources brought on by the loss of territory soon proved to be a major problem, one that quickly led to an escalation in disputes over natural resources. We'll continue this later. All right, time to start the briefing. We've got a new guy here today, but I'll have to cut the introduction short. My name's Goodfellow, and I'm your rep from the Arrows. As you know, Arrows is a mercenary force specializing in aerial warfare. Some people like to call us pirates. I prefer they'd call us privateers, at least. We are being employed by the UN Security Council, after all. Anyway, the UNSC's military staff committee just sent Arrows a request for deployment. It was originally going to be an escort mission for the UNF Pacific Fleet stationed in Tokyo Bay, but that's changed. We now have multiple unknown UAVs flying toward Area J4E, Japan's former capital of Tokyo. In other words, right here. The UAVs are likely armed. We need them downed before they reach city limits. This will be the first sortie for the rookie here, tack name Reaper. Here's your emblem. Omega from the Bone Arrow flight will be supporting you on this mission. Follow his instructions. I'll be expecting results, you hear? Dismissed. Destroy. Good work. All 
radar blips? What the hell? Enemy UAVs approaching. Open CIWS fire. Enemy UAVs are attacking urban areas. They're striking the coastline for Shinagawa and Kawasaki. The same armed versions we just ran into. All units, eliminate them before there's any more damage. Damage report. There's an evacuation order out for the coastal areas. All enemy UAVs down. No further enemy presence in this airspace. This is JASDF 309. Thanks for your support. Glad to be a service. I'm getting the latest damage report now. Looks like they didn't reach the evacuation zones. Not too shabby, Reaper. These things are clocks craft, you said? Why would they be striking Tokyo? I'll get the UNF to brief me on the UAVs later. All units, clear to return home. This is believed to be a terrorist attack carried out by armed forces from the Iuli region. They've caused extensive damage to Tokyo. The naval fleet was also attacked, so the UNF generals are all furious right now. The UAVs they used are an upgraded version of the MQ-90 Quox, a Japanese-made UAV that's also been deployed in the Americas. It may be unmanned, but it's still a very powerful bomber. It's equipped with an aggressive aerodynamic design and a new type of semi-automatic control system. The UNSC says it's a Werner Noah product. Apparently the control system's a top secret design that they stole. Werner denies everything, of course. Navigation would normally use a system that relies on improved GPS satellite tech, but this craft uses a different relay system for its operations. We also caught an unknown fighter craft flying at high altitude over the area. The UN's going to raid and inspect Werner's facilities in Ayuli and the other special zones shortly. Werner Noah is the biggest company in its field. Normally, the UN doesn't like doing anything to make them angry. Now, though, I guess they don't have much choice. Welcome back. Let's continue where we left off. Now, where was I? Oh, right. So tensions were escalating worldwide. The wars that resulted led to an increasing number of refugees. To handle these refugees, special semi-autonomous zones were established in the EU, the Asian nations, and part of Russia. Iuli, the zone founded in southern Russia, was the largest of them land-wise, which allowed them to take in vast numbers of migrants. But these refugees were treated like cheap labor. Living conditions grew worse, and the region was soon home to gigantic slum areas. Anti-foreign worker demonstrations were rife across the entire zone, threatening peace and welfare in the surrounding regions. As a result, a certain company stepped in to help support the job market in the refugee zones. That company was Werner Noah Enterprises, the defense contractor giant. Once nations had to slash their military budgets after the Ulysses disaster, the private military service industry with its mercenary forces experienced a major boom. Also, thanks to the advanced automated aviation plan introducing enhanced computer numerical control to aircraft manufacture, it became a simple matter to rebuild previously existing aircraft designs. The resulting glut in available aircraft led to a new issue, a lack of pilots to control them. Hence why you now see mercenary groups cobbled together from dropout pilots. <clears throat> but I digress. The nations and federations overseeing the special zones welcomed Werner's support. In turn, Werner received huge parcels of land and a huge workforce to do its bidding. Soon the company expanded from its core military business into energy and space development. Their business had an enormous impact on recovery efforts around the world, and the localized conflicts began to simmer down. Now we come to today, 20 years later. The special zones have shown major economic growth under Werner's wing. But the huge weapon stockpiles stored in these zones have made them a breeding ground for armed extremist groups. These groups have formed a multinational network spread across the special zones. And more and more we're seeing them carry out anti-imperialist attacks in the nations surrounding Iuli. This has led the UN and the world's superpowers to label them terrorists. Which brings us to... Hmm? Are you awake? Sorry, you must be tired. We can pick this up another time.
Following the Tokyo terror attack, the UN staged emergency inspections on facilities in Ayuli. They didn't obtain any evidence on the new UAVs we saw, but they did discover plans for an orbital weapon. Multiple nations are apparently involved in its development. The UN calls it a violation of space treaties and a new threat to replace nuclear proliferation. They're demanding the project be halted immediately. As a result, the chief military official at Werner has been forced out of the company. But this thing isn't over yet. In fact, it's just beginning. We've spotted a large squadron of unidentified transport aircraft heading for Area B-9K, an aerospace center in the West Indies accompanied by escort craft. The center was involved with the development of the space weapon I discussed. The nature of the cargo is unknown, but once we identify the craft as hostile, you have permission to shoot them down. Normally, this would be a UNF or USAF job, but given how tense things have been with Latin America, the US doesn't want to pour any more oil on the fire. All in all, they preferred if the media kept their focus on the Tokyo attacks instead of this. That's why they enlisted us privateers for their dirty work. It ought to be a pretty good payday for us. We'll be having our best pilot on this up. In Arrows, if you're a top earner, you get first priority over everyone else. You want money, you want fame, then you're gonna have to outdo our ace here.
Great job, Bone Arrow Squadron. Time to go home. Good fellow, the Viper. How'd our new recruit do? Reaper kid? Not bad, considering. If he applies himself, I can see him becoming useful. Anyone can, if they put in the time to get past their growing pains. <laughs> too bad that last guy didn't get that far. Yeah, because you pushed him too hard. Well done. The Aerospace Center emerged unscathed. We're investigating the transported cargo right now. For now, this will remain a covert op. Now, I know you guys just went halfway around the world, but I've got more work for you. A group of nine high-powered executives known as the Gray Men have been kidnapped in Russia. We're talking elite members of the most exclusive circles of world economics and government. Meanwhile, terrorist forces have occupied a Werner military facility in Iuli, in southwest Russia. We've got armed insurrections around other Werner facilities too, and we think they're connected. So, we'll be heading for Russia. Right now, we've got a hostage rescue operation at the Werner facility in area R2M, southwestern Iuli. It's being led by a team of regular military forces. The terror group we're up against is likely to stage a large-scale counterattack. You'll be providing close air support, going in ahead of our commando forces to destroy surveillance sites. You'll also be responsible for striking the hostiles around the facility to ensure a smooth approach for our commandos. Once we've secured the nine Gray Men hostages held in the central facility, we'll need you to back up the commandos as they pull out of the area. On this op, you'll be working alongside a UNAF tactical fighter squadron, the Ridgebacks. Unlike you guys, they're about as elite a force as you can get. If we don't rack up more kills than they do, it's gonna impact my bottom line, and thus yours, dismissed.
also try dive bombing the target from above. Not that you're good enough. Yeah. Before I keep that up, we're gonna have Viper Jr. on our crew soon, huh? The last thing I need is Viper and his clone yelling at me in stereo. Oh, I wouldn't expect the clone. Pieces come in all shapes and sizes. Right, good fellow? You could say that. Enemy facility destroyed. One kilometer to destination. We appreciate the help, pirates. Ah, the helmet from behind. Responding to IFF. Allies? Stay in formation. Keep focused on your surroundings. 
explosive shell? That can't be the end of it. They're gonna hit us again. This is Skyon. All units, we've got something flying in at supersonic speed. It's coming at you from long range. Lower your altitude. What do you want us to do? Burrow underground? Damn it! Into the canyon! That's the only way! Commando team, stand by where you are. Anyone in high altitude is an open target. Move it! 20 kilometers to escape line. Arrows, all units. Follow Viper into the canyon. Bridgebacks, all of me. I'll mark out the route. Right behind you. You'll be open to hostile fire at high altitude. I'm restricting your altitude to 800 meters. You are now clear of the airspace. Enemy fire has subsided. Removing altitude restrictions. Not gonna deal with that again. Arrows, all units report. Rookie, you still alive? Bone arrow flight fully accounted for. What in the hell was that? I don't know, but when I hear a real gun, one thing comes to mind. Yeah. Would have been out quicker if these pests could actually keep in formation. Slash to Ridgebacks, we're going home. Roger. See you, pirates. All business, huh? Viper. Sounds like you got a good pupil there. Copy that. Better get Viper's Ace Seminar 104 ready. It's gonna be a lot tougher than the last three. The terrorist groups were apparently planning to commandeer an anti-air railgun in Turkey. We were too late to stop them. And now it's in the hands of the enemy. They're using MenHer-3, a geosynchronous satellite, to aim the gun. Due to the Comprehensive Space Warfare Ban Treaty, we're not allowed to touch it. Luckily, the gun can only fire extreme close-range SS ordnance. That gives it the shortest firing range we can hope for. Let me be clear, though, that it's extreme close-range only in astronomical terms. What's more, its power is overwhelming. It can cover a four million foot radius, which means we've essentially lost air superiority in Eastern Europe and the Western Middle East. We also have a confirmed SSTO launch from the West Indies a few days back. That presents the possibility that Werner's satellites have been seized by the terrorists. The UN is planning for a bombing run in Ayuli. However, we can't go near the area because it's within railgun firing range. Thus, we'll be staging an attack in Area T-8F, Central Turkey, at the Stonehenge Type 3 Disaster Memorial. If you're struck by the railgun's fire or the shock waves it generates, you'll be killed instantly. Also, our enemy has an electronic countermeasure system installed in the area around Stonehenge. It's jamming our radar FCS and making it impossible to lock on from airborne craft. As such, we'll try to have an allied ground force approach Stonehenge and use artillery to destroy the ECM base. Eliminate any hostile defense forces that may halt their advance. Once the ECM site is destroyed, you'll be able to lock on again. That's when you'll attack and destroy the railgun itself. This is gonna be a test for all of you. You'll be accompanied by a team of crack pilots from the UNF and elsewhere. Don't let them get ahead of you. Any of you guys destroy the railgun, you're gonna get a real hefty bonus.
advance of our ground forces. These ground forces will attempt to destroy the electronic countermeasure system in the center of Stonehenge. Once they do and your radar-based FCS is back online, you will begin to attack the main railgun. Roger, Roger, just send me the data already! Sending fire zone data. Check your displays. Get out of the danger zone before my countdown hits zero. Spread out and support the ground forces. This blast may cause damage, even at low altitude. Once you see the initial explosion, get away from the site immediately. Work your way around the secondary explosion. Wave 2 incoming! Get out of the danger zone! It's gonna blow you down!
Stonehenge installation neutralized. Great work. Good one. Well done, Reaper. Which squadron took out the ECM system for us? This is Sky Eye. We had a few flights operating in there. Probably the Ridgebacks, though. Yeah, they look like a different group from down here. Well, thanks a lot, single one. We couldn't have done it without you. I, uh... I wish we had time to celebrate more, but that's gonna have to wait. While we were busy attacking Stonehenge, the terrorists have been staging simultaneous attacks on multiple cities in Eastern Europe, the Middle East, and the Asian Federation. They took control in the blink of an eye. The leader of the armed terrorists has published a statement to the world. It turns out the leader is Casper Cohen, the guy who lost his job as chief military officer of Werna after the space weapon scandal. Cohen has executed the nine kidnapped Greymen, claiming they've manipulated UN and international policy after the Ulysses disaster, so the elite could profit off of other people's misery. He also announced the establishment of an independent Federation of Usia. A nation of Ulysses refugees that runs from the Eastern EU all the way to the Asian Federation. Here's what he said in his statement. 20 years after the Ulysses disaster, our refugees have faced untold pain and suffering. Even now, the fragments of Ulysses still lurk near our planet in the form of near-Earth objects. There is every chance they could rain down upon us again in the future, thus repeating the tragedy of Ulysses. All of mankind must come together now to deal with this crisis. And yet, for the past 20 years, the United Nations has been weakened by the great and powerful nations of the world. To deal with this sad state of affairs, we, the so-called lost generation of young refugees, must create a new order to replace the ailing UN. We must form a new, powerful, united front to save our planet from oblivion. That's the end of it. It's all a bunch of propaganda, of course. But they're using Werna's military facilities in Ayuli to build up their forces and create defense perimeters in all the continent's major cities. They're working far too fast for this to be the work of terrorists alone. They're likely working in tandem with at least a few nations. The UN shuffled their feet for too long, and now they're paying for it. Yuzia, another page of history unfolds. Let's take a look at some more history. Once, there was a massive nation known as the Mongol Empire. Oops, time to deploy again, I suppose. Another time, perhaps. You all here? Good. In order to block the invasion of the so-called Yuzian army, the UN has decided to stage a large-scale campaign across multiple Eurasian defense perimeters. They'll be conducting simultaneous ops in two areas, the Persian Gulf and the Far East. They invited Arrows to be a part of this effort. You'll be departing for Tokyo shortly. The scale of this campaign is massive, encompassing multiple land, sea, and air operations on both sides. It'll be a punishing battle, but if you want to get your name out there, there's no better opportunity to do it. Make sure your aircraft is as battle-ready as you can make it. I want to see us dominate in this fight. Dismissed.
operations to liberate Tokyo. All squadrons, aim for the best battle results within the time limit. Bridgeback 1, engaging. Bridgeback 2, engaging.
Switch back in bone arrow flights. Concentrate on the hostile escort fighters. All other units, attack the heavy command group.
its legs first. Focus your fire on the rear engine. Begin your attack on the cruiser now. Viper, ready to hunt that whale? Roger to that, Captain Ahab. Hey, didn't he go down with Moby Dick in the end? Wow, you actually ready? Edge to Ridgebacks. I'm taking command. Anyone who's hit, return to base now. Everyone else, spread out and attack the whale. Great job, guys. That Moby Dick was a giant airborne command ship developed by a certain nation's military. Basically, in an attempt to cut down the number of aircraft they had to deploy, they decided to over-engineer this gigantic flying beast of a battleship. Also, the UAV lasers we saw on the butterflies are equipped with a visual ID function that can recognize pilots by their flight helmets and strike as necessary. It automatically activates when they get close. A merciless weapon of murder. Watch out for it. The Butterfly Master's craft is apparently a re-engineered CFA-44, but we're still investigating the details. Ugh. Anyway, 
Thanks to your hard work, the enemy force has taken serious damage. Unfortunately, so have we. The Tokyo area is nearby the enemy's far east battle perimeter. It'll be a hot zone for a while to come, I imagine. We're all in for a long, tough slog here. Anyway, I was hoping we could have a celebration slash retirement party for Viper. But the UNFHQ has yet another deploy order for us. You guys just rest up for now. I'm gonna go have the top brass yell at me for a bit. Again, good job. Everyone here? A lot of you probably haven't met before, but just listen up for now. In preparation for the battle against the Yuzian army, the UNF has requested that Arrows join them as a regular force. Arrows have agreed to this request. As a result, all Arrows units are hereby disbanded. You'll be regrouped into Task Force 118, Arrow Blades, an independent assault force under direct military staff committee command. I will continue to serve as commander. Air squadrons affiliated with the regular force will also be disbanded and regrouped. Edge and the Ridgeback flight will join the Arrowblades as well. In addition, proven mercenaries and privateers from a multitude of countries will be joining our force. We may no longer be a UN independent command, but we will still receive rewards for our performance as before. We're now launching Operation Eternal Liberation, a military op covering all defense lines across Eurasia. If you're new here, let me make one thing straight. If you're the top earner, you get first priority over everyone else. You want money? You want fame? Then you're gonna have to outdo our ace here. Twenty-four hours until reactivation. What? Ah, oh, that's no fun. Please be patient, Master. Next! All right, let's get this briefing started. A large-scale experimental missile site has been discovered in Area M3A, straddling the border between Russia and Mongolia. It's situated in the Avalon Dam, a facility under the management of Werner Noah. Yuzian forces are gathered around the site as we speak. The dam lake has been completely drained, revealing the missile site and an array of anti-air installations. The gravity dam itself has been repurposed to serve as a de facto fortress of concrete. Judging by the size and shape of the silos, we believe the site was built to handle ICBMs. To be safe, we've deployed an AL-1B missile interceptor in Russian airspace. However, we've been asked to neutralize the site before they can launch any ICBMs. The arrow blades will approach from the Russian side through a canyon that leads to the dam site. Maintain a low altitude at all times or else you'll be picked up on radar and become an easy target for long-range anti-air missiles. Stay at low altitude as you pass through the canyon. Once we arrive at the site, our ground forces will enter the facility and secure the main routes of passage into the silos. You will then use those passages to fly underground and destroy the missile facility. This operation will require extremely precise flying skills, but considering everything you've made it through up to now, I have no doubt about our chances of success here. I'll be expecting results. Dismissed.
destroy the ICBM launch systems. We don't have much time to work with. Don't worry about the hot Get Guess we better speed up! Speeding at full throttle! All units keep moving.
seconds to launch. Countdown just passed. Two a minute. Do it, Captain! ICBM down. You got one more to go. That was a close one. We gave you a tough mission and you executed it flawlessly. Good job. Analysis suggests that the ICBM's path would have landed it in Washington, D.C. They were trying to bring this war to American soil. All right, time to start the briefing. We've spotted an enemy fighter squadron taking off from South America. They're flying toward U.S. territory. We'll be scrambling from our San Diego base to intercept. You will meet an area B-7R in the Nevada wastelands. It's mostly flat and dotted with circular ridges. The area is codenamed Roundtable by the USAF, which uses it as a proving ground for testing special purpose aircraft. Due to radio interference from the mineral resources buried underground, communications on this op will be hard. If you have to bail out, you're going to have trouble contacting rescue. It'll likely take several days to track you down, so keep that in mind, Omega. You'll likely have a pretty ferocious firefight with the enemy squadron. We have some time before deployment. Make sure your craft's fully prepared for combat.
test out new aircraft in this area. It's a special location where countless pilots have polished their skills with each other, independent of their ranks. You know, I don't think you've ever talked about your past career before. Yeah, and I won't now either. You're almost at the engage point. Here we go. That's a hell of a crowd. Give them a warm welcome for me, okay? Sky Eye to all units. Permission to engage.
Following interrogation of our POWs, we've uncovered several facts about the Butterfly Master's ID. He pilots the QFA-44 Camilla, a new type of unmanned craft. Its hardware remains a mystery, but its capabilities are superior to the Quarks. We've confirmed that it uses a low-orbit communication satellite network to handle the transmission of navigational data. Taking out the satellites would solve our problem quickly, but the space treaty we've signed with the UN prevents that. I'm sure the UN will try to enact some measure or another to deal with that, but a lot of countries, particularly in South America, are dead set against any meddling with that treaty. It's going to take some time. Those politicians are trapped by the very rules they enacted. Well, we're all set to go. Soon, we'll be staging a campaign to storm the territory claimed by Yuzia and liberate Eastern Europe. We're calling it Operation Bunker Shot. You'll be going through Area V9D over the Adriatic Sea and into Croatian airspace within the SEU. The ground force will divide into two groups and circumvent Ruta, one of the Elefiti Islands, for the landing. The landing point features a narrow road going inland it is well suited for defending against invaders, and we can expect heavy enemy resistance. Our air squadrons will wipe up hostiles on the beach and keep ground casualties to a minimum. If we succeed, this could be the tipping point that'll end the entire Yuzian War. We're gonna strike them right in the throat.
FAC.
operational coherence. The enemy's falling back! Almost there. Destroy the enemy strongholds.
Great to see all of you back here. The landing operation was a success, albeit a costly one. It'll definitely give us the advantage as we commence operations across the Eurasian continent. Meanwhile, though, it's still slow going for the battle lines in Western Russia, where a separate operation is currently underway. The Butterfly Master's craft was spotted over Moscow. We still have no idea where he's actually based, though. As for the space weapon we saw in action, we'll brief you on what we know later on. For now, I want you all to take a well-deserved rest. We've obtained detailed information on an orbital weapon called the ULDS. It's part of what they call the Shattered Skies Project. It was created in order to keep the Ulysses fragments away from the geosynchronous orbit range. But Werner R&D secretly used the system to help them deploy a tactical weapon. The system uses lasers fired from satellites to vaporize the surface of orbital matter using the resulting thrust to change its orbit. Instead of readjusting orbits to keep the Earth safe, they've rejiggered it to send the fragments crashing to the surface in the area of their choice. They still haven't fully analyzed the effect of these orbital strikes. I doubt it's very accurate as a weapon yet. However, in theory at least, ULDs can be used to attack anywhere across the entire planet. We have Ulysses Part 2 on our hands here. ULDs does have a safety latch of sorts which makes it impossible for the network to target man-made objects in orbit. However, it'll only be a matter of time before Werner deactivates it. We are expanding the range of Operation Eternal Liberation. Campaigns are underway within the Eurasian continent as well. The Arrowheads will be reorganized by squadron and will participate in ops across the entire continent. Any of you think you can top our ace? I look forward to seeing you try. Dismissed. Well, you're sounding chipper. Something good happened to you? I finally found a decent opponent. That ribbon guy should provide plenty of fun. <laughs> the Papillon Project. I think another page in history is about to be turned. Is there any way to solve the lag issues with data transfer, though? I'm sure you must feel cramped here. Mm-hmm. Not at all. I like it. I've got a front row seat to the whole thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 <laughs>